Bodoni è uguale. There's a hive of activity in the church, everyone, don't be worried. This is a very good thing. It is our joy on this day to uh, have not just a special communion service, because every communion service is special, but today we have baptism of twin boys, Toby and Casper. And uh, so, and they have been growing all throughout this time of lockdown and COVID, so they're bouncing boys, so it's going to be interesting is what I'm going to tell you to you. So everybody work with me here and you're going to have a wonderful time, because it is the 12th Sunday of After Trinity and there is a great message to be told. But first, let's stand to sing, remain standing, to sing, Be Thou My Vision. Jesus Christ came 
that we might know God in a deeper and more personal way, that we might cast away everything that keeps us from God and from loving each other. Christ came to us to remove sins from our lives, that we may be free to be in a wondrous relationship with him. That's what today's all about, really. So let us say our invitation, our confession together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through greediness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, harden you from all your sins, and bring you to life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please have a seat, everyone. I've just got to get a book for the collect. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray, and to give more than either we desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things which we are not worthy to ask but through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So let us have our first reading. First reading is taken from Joshua chapter 24, beginning at the first verse. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, and the judges, and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Now therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods which your fathers served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. And if you be unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your fathers served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our fathers up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. And he did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the ways that we went and among all the people through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the people, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we will serve the Lord, for he is our God. Here ends the first reading. And so now we will have our second reading from Ephesians, and I believe one of the Baptism family are coming to do that. Thank you very much. Finally, be strong. 
strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armour of God, so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armour of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything to stand firm, stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As sure as for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known the boldness and the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Thank you. So now let us stand to sing the hymn that the Baptist family have chosen. Nothing <coughs> has broken like the first war. Father. 
Because of this, many disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please have a seat. I'm just going to go back a few pictures like I like to do. Because when I chose, oh, quite a few pictures, sorry. When I chose this picture, I laughed to myself. Because I could just imagine two little boys dressing up with various dressing up things with a shield and a sword and a paper helmet and running around the garden, bashing each other and having a jolly good time like boys do. So it did make me smile. But then it made me think, isn't it a shame that we need the full armour of God, really? When you hear what has happened in various countries around the world, particularly recently in Afghanistan, and how people actually need the full armour of God because they are being so hurt and killed, and it's a terrible situation in Afghanistan. But it's not only in Afghanistan, is it? There are places throughout the world where these Terrible things have been happening over centuries. And when we think that not just men are fighting wars, women and children and teenagers and everybody is involved and hurt when forces come to oppress and punish and take over countries. No matter, no wonder, rather, so many are fleeing to countries where they hope there is fairness, where they hope there is democracy, where they hope they will be treated fairly and with care and also with dignity for their very personhood. When we come to speak out against these things, often we are told that, well, what can we do? Speaking about these things doesn't achieve anything. You have to impose sanctions and various other methods to actually starve them of their income or change their economy or you know, work in different ways, psychological sometimes as well. But actually, when it comes to speaking out for good, I begin to wonder that we're scared to do it nowadays. But I am today going to speak boldly out for good. And I'm going to speak boldly for good because faith has moved on. Faith and belief has moved on from the time when we heard from the book of Joshua, when the people believed in their own gods, the God of the sun, the God of the weather, the God of the streams, the God of the food that grew in their fields. People were basically praying to all different manner of gods around them, and there was no co coherence for the good of all. And then we come to our Gospel reading, where Jesus speaks the truth into the situation. And he says that the authorities are actually causing more damage than good. So here he is as a shining light to give himself, not just his body and his blood, but the very soul of God within him, to give himself totally for the people around him, and not just the Jewish nation, but also the Gentiles around them in Tyre and Sidon, and his, his ministry went far and wide, actually, not just through himself, but obviously later through his disciples and apostles. And I'll come to Paul, who wrote the Ephesians letter in a moment. And what Jesus is saying is, when he says, 
Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. What he's saying is, if you follow the way that I am showing you, the truth that I am telling you, the givenness that I am giving, which is my all, you will come to understand that by that generosity, by that mercy, by that compassion, by that utter givenness, and speaking with integrity and truth, when something is so wrong, yes, it's dangerous. They made Jesus suffer, and they killed him to shut him up. But he couldn't be shut up, because he didn't just die. He rose again and shocked them all. And he didn't just rise again. For 50 days before he ascended into heaven, he had to, 40 days before he ascended into heaven, he's continued to nurture and speak to the disciples who then spread out throughout the world, basically, to say, this is the way to be. This is what not just humanity is about, but life is about. Life is about love and hope and peace. And as we consider not just the disciples going out, Paul, the apostle, met Jesus on the Damascus, Damascus, on the Damascus Road. But he didn't know Jesus before he died and rose again. This is the what I call the coming plan portrait. You know. Paul the Apostle met the risen Christ on the Damascus Road. Therefore he knew without a doubt that Christ was risen and what Christ stood for was important. And when he wrote his beautiful letter to the Ephesians, and if you get a chance, it's not a long book, when you look at the journey through the book of Ephesians, the letter of Ephesians, he starts with the spiritual blessings that you can have with Jesus Christ, knowing God, the creator, and the existence of life itself. He then prays at the back end of chapter one. He then talks about us moving from the death of sin to the life of goodness. This is such a journey for all of us. And basically what it means is to grow up and speak with integrity and love each other. The movement from death to life. Don't we need that at the moment? And then he says, but what we need is not many gods. We need a coherent message, a coherent person to lead us in that fight, if you like, for peace. And he goes on in chapter 2 to speak about being one in Christ. That means being one as anointed people, anointed with the love of God, anointed with the Holy Spirit, which was given 50 days after he rose from the dead at Pentecost. And then Paul talks about his ministry of spreading this beautiful message of love, the ministry to the Gentiles. He continues in prayer and he said we can be one in the body of Christ, in unity and in peace. We move in chapter 4 from the old life to the new. And there are rules for the new life. It is being kind and compassionate to each other and to work honestly and to renounce pagan ways that are all about, in a way, a, a naive existence of our being. We are to move on and help our children to grow. And then he says, but actually, it's a dangerous business. So put on the full armour of God. Be girded with truth. Wear the breastplate of righteousness. Speak the gospel of peace. Have the shield of faith. Put on that helmet of salvation. And have the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. What is the word of God? Love. Hope. Peace. Don't we need it today more than ever? Amen. <clears throat> Ultimately, when we bring children into the world, this is what we want for them. 
And baptism is the way of signifying our intention for good for our children. So we now come to a wondrous time where we baptise Toby and Casper. And as we do so, we do it together. So let us all stand and turn to the pond. <coughs> let us pray. And the prayers are on page 10 in your service booklets. Lord God, we thank you that you have claimed for yourself Toby and Casper who have been washed in the waters of the birth. Uphold them in this new life, that they may ever remain steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and rooted in your love. Father of life, may we know your glory. For your blessing on all your people, may our hearts ever praise you and find their perfect rest in you. Grant us the freedom of your service and peace in doing your will. Father of life, may we know your glory. The whole creation is filled with the light of your grace. Dispel the darkness of our hearts and forgive our sins and negligences that we may come at last to the light of your glory. Father of life, may we know your glory. God of grace and love, in your love, you have given us a place among your people. Keep us all faithful to our baptism and prepare us for that glorious day when the whole creation will be made perfect in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So, I will now give some of the notices for this week. Um, first of all, um, I will just um, share with you sad news, unfortunately. Um, our dear brother in Christ, Anthony Clayton, died um, in the last week, very suddenly. It wasn't expected at all. Anthony would always sit here um, by the choir because he loved the music. He loved the organ and he gave the most amazing intercessions. His prayer, prayers were so special, theologically sound, but also in utter tune with what was going on in the world. And um, he has been obviously not with us during COVID and um, his unexpected death is, is um, a surprise to us all. So we send our prayers and our love to his family and um, his funeral um, will be on the 13th of September and the family has said that all, anybody from church are so welcome to come. Um, that's 13th of September at 2.30 here in the church. Um, we also sadly um, lost another brother, David Jones, a few weeks ago. We don't have a date for his um, service and funeral yet. But um, as soon as I know it, I will let you know. We have an Alpha call starting on Monday the 6th of September, and this is for all and any who have questions about the Christian faith. And uh, we meet in the hall at 7 o'clock, we feed you with a two-course meal, then there's a video and a chat and questions, and we wrap up for 9 o'clock. So if any of you are thinking about anything I've said today even, that's been a challenge or that you might feel that you would like to delve in more deeply, as it were, do come on the Alpha course. I'm doing a, a sponsored walk uh, for the church funds on the 18th of September. It's beating the band, so it's the boundary of the parish, which is about 15 miles. Um, if anybody would like to come with me, that would just be wonderful and get sponsors. Uh, it's a cracking walk absolutely beautiful in the summer hills, so do come along if you would like to. There are also confirmations on the 19th of September at 6 o'clock. I have four candidates um, so far. Um, if anybody else would like to consider confirmation, please contact me as soon as possible, and we are meeting in the hall at the moment um, at 6 o'clock on Monday nights, and I'm going through as much as I can impart. The Archbishop of Canterbury is coming to Morehouse School at 11.30 on the 26th of September and there are blue cards at the crossing for you to take, which has the 
um, where you can apply to book a place. There are only 500 places and it's for the whole of the Farnham Deanery. So if you want to go or take anybody um, with you who perhaps might not be a church goer, then, then do um, fill in the form there. On the Friday evening, the 24th of September, there was actually a meeting in Lakeside in Camberley, which was about 5,000 people, and that was mainly what we call the church meeting. So if any church members would like to go to that, um, please let me know as soon as possible, because it may be possible that we can, um, John Heffington has so kindly offered the minibuses from Morehouse School to take us as a group. So if people would like to go to a dedicated time of worship with the Archbishop of Canterbury, I still find it strange to sort of think that, um, on the Friday the 24th of September, do let me know and what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll put lists at the crossing um, if you would like to go to that one. Um, so and a few other things just to really bring to your attention. First of all, um, before lockdown, um, myself and Eunice um, wrote, rewrote the Impact Alpha, we rewrote the booklet on this church. We didn't only rewrite the booklet, but we also put an amazing architectural journey um, in it as well. So if anybody would like to have one of those, they're five pounds, and you, if you have got the cash, you can even do it on the collect tin at the door. Um, very simply, so you can do it on a card, um, and also you can give donations for the service and for the, the work here in the church on the collecting. Now we're very modern here, very modern, we come into the, the modern world, so card, is a card reader, so you can give any donations to the church if you would like that way, or as we have been doing, um, just as you're going out the door, this way, getting your teas and coffees. And also, I will give a plug for Friends of French and Churches, because the Friends of French and Churches says what it is on the packet. Do take one of these away with you. Help preserve and maintain these historic buildings for future generations. It's not just the historic building. This is the place, the sanctuary, where I pray the love of God just shines through the windows and out into the community. And I love it that we now have to have doors and windows open so that basically the love can just be at one with the community. So if you want any of those, um, perhaps please see Eunice or Roger at the crossing. And now for a very special thing. Because We've been doing weddings, everyone, and I just love them. I published the bands of marriage between David Anthony Mullen and Laura Diane Maker. If any of you knows any reason in law why they, these couples may not, this couple may not marry each other, you are to declare it now, and this is the third time for asking. And I have published the bands of marriage for Frederick Malcolm Billings and Gillian K. Wright. If any of you know any reason in law why these persons may not lawfully marry each other, you are to declare it. So let's pray for our lovely couples. <coughs> Lord of love, we pray for our couples. Be with them in all their preparations and on their wedding day. Give them your love in their hearts throughout their married life together, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And as it's the third time, it means you haven't got long to get it all organised, I'm just saying. <laughs> so, my dears, let us stand to sing, Christ is made the sure foundation.
mighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love you gave us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them in heavenly song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please have a seat, everyone. And if you look from page 14 in your orders of service, there is a response. Father of all, we give you thanks for every good gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light, with signs of faith and words of hope. He touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This, this is our song. Hosanna in the highest. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This, this is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it and said, This is my body given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it and said, This is my blood shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is his story. This, this is our song. But sad is the heart. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and for all the world. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Send your Holy Spirit on us now, that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with open eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven, where all creation worships you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. And so let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in the one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. I would just say for those who 
aren't used to having the communion um, and perhaps haven't had it for a while, we are giving communion by the safe way of intention, which is I sterilise my hands and so will uh, Janet um, and uh, she will hold the chalice and I will intent the wafer into the wine and drop it onto your hand at a distance. So do come up for communion and wear your masks and just hold your hand out like so I will give it to you, take it back to your seat and have it there just to make it clear because we are keeping you all safe.
God of all mercy, it is you who is. You have set aside our sins and given us your healing. Grant that we who are made whole in Christ may bring that healing to this broken world. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so let us say our post-communion prayer together. Almighty God, we thank you for leading us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And so let us literally stand up to sing our last hymn as we sing, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus.
During this difficult time, when our church buildings are closed, we're still a church. Meeting virtually for prayer services and fellowship. Loving our neighbours by offering practical support to the vulnerable. And caring for our communities. The work of our church is reliant on people's generosity. A generosity that is a hallmark of a lived out faith and a testament to it. We give to our church in a variety of ways, but with the closure of all our buildings, we cannot receive all the gifts that we usually would. So we really need your help now.